Hello, I'm Kevin Brasino, General Manager of Rocktown Adventures. Uh, you may have noticed, although last week would be a little bit harder with all the, the clouds and rain we got, but you might notice that the sun's getting a little lower in the horizon, shadows are getting a little longer, which means fall's coming. Uh, for some of us, that might not be a good thing. Uh, for others, uh, fall is just another season for outdoor adventure. And for us, it's actually our favorite time of year to paddle. Um, like I said, you got the sun sitting lower in the horizon, uh, changing landscapes, uh, different wildlife in the area. Um, so it's just a really fun, relaxing time. And with the increase in kayak sales that we've seen recently, we want to provide some information to help paddlers enjoy fall. Doesn't seem very likely we're going to have any indoor recreation options anytime soon. So we want to try to make sure that you can extend your fall paddling season and have a safe, enjoyable time out in the water. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind about fall paddling is the air and water temperature. Um, what we're looking for is a combined 120 degrees air and water temperature. Anything beneath that mark, we need to have some kind of protective clothing on. The level of protective clothing varies on a lot of factors. There's no magic number of, hey, at XX degrees, I need to have on package A or package B or package C. Um, a lot of factors are going to determine how the level of protection you need to have on you when you're paddling in the fall, such as your own tolerance to cold, your physical condition, your paddling and rescue skills, the paddling and rescue skills of your companions, and how far away are you from land. Um, all those are going to play a role in how much robust protection you need to have on your body. But we want to keep in mind of that 120 degrees combined air and water. We want to plan as though we're going to go for a swim. You may be thinking to yourself, oh, I've never gone for a swim in my life. I've never fallen out of my kayak. However, there's a law in the universe called Murphy's. And it's a son of a gun when it rears its ugly head. So we want to make sure that when Murphy does appear, that we're ready to handle that situation. And we can do that by having proper clothing on our body. So the first thing we're going to talk about is our extremities. How do we protect our hands and our feet from staying warm? Nothing's more miserable than cold toes. So the first thing we have here is we have a paddle shoe. Uh, this is a, a warm weather paddle shoe, um, fully water resistant. We got some decent traction uh, in the sole of the boot. Uh, so we've got good footing underneath when we're walking on river banks or walking in the river. Uh, these can be layered with wool socks, any kind of sock to provide some extra uh, warmth. Um, if you wanted to provide some extra water protection, we can even add in a hydro skin sock underneath that, or we can wear this by itself into any kind of normal shoe with uh, an insulating layer underneath, like a wool sock or something underneath to keep our feet from getting warm. And then for our hands, we've got waterproof paddling gloves. This is the Forecast from NRS. They also make a hydro skin glove, um, fully waterproof. When these do get wet though and get some cold wind on it, we can get a little bit of cold with our hands. For some, so, so for some even more robust water protection, we have uh, what's called the Mamba. Mamba, this here fits right around your paddle shaft. Velcro it on, put our hands in there, and now we've got full hand protection from the elements. For your outerwear needs, we have three different areas to talk about. We have what we call neoprene, uh, we have semi-dry, and we have dry. Um, we like to bring in the Hydra Skin from NRS. It's a very simple, easy layering system. Um, don't have any gaskets to deal with. You don't have to, you don't have to, to burp a dry suit or something like that. So the Hydra Skin is simply a, a neoprene material, much like a wetsuit. Um, it traps your heat inside your body. Um, so it's got titanium panels to help with that. We do want to wear a moisture wicking base layer is our first layer in the Hydra Skin. It is a little form fitting. It does restrict movement to a little degree. Uh, good advantage of the Hydra Skin is price point. Um, a lot less expensive than a dry suit. Um, and, and multiple uh, range of uses. It can be worn as an outer layer. We can put on a simple water repellent jacket like the Outdoor Research Ferrosi, shameless plug there, um, or another splash top to provide more robust protection. So we got multiple uses for that at a lower price point. Uh, the second area of protective clothing we've got to help ourselves combat the elements for fall paddling is semi-dry wear splash tops. Splash tops are lightweight, breathable, very easy to layer underneath to add extra warmth protection. Uh, women's version, men's version right here. You've got adjustable urethane collars, wrist gaskets, 
and enclosures in the bottom to help seal out water. Advantages of your splash tops, very easy to lay, layer underneath, um, very good protection from wind and, and water spray. Um, the only drawback to them is if you do get fully in, in, immersed in water, your inner layers will get a little wet, um, but they work very, very well. In fact, that's the system that I used when I had to do my ACA trip leader certification. I had a splash top and an insulating moisture wicking layer underneath. Probably had to go in the water a dozen times. We did this in, in May, typical spring, May Midwestern weather, 50 degrees, windy and drizzle. So that's a very good system still, still works really well. And you can use it for multiple things besides paddling. So the last category of protective paddling we want to discuss today is dry wear. Dry wear comes in a couple of different forms. It can come in dry tops. It can come in dry bottoms. Or it can even come in a, in a full-on paddling suit, such as the NRS paddling suit right here. Um, the difference between dry wear and semi-dry wear. Latex gasket around the neck and around the wrist. This is skin tight and snug, so it seals your water out. Other good thing about dry wear is you can layer underneath it to whatever degree you want to match the conditions that you're paddling in. And everything underneath you is going to stay dry. One of the drawbacks with dry wear is it comes with a little bit of an increased price point. Uh, a good paddling suit is going to be $7,800. Um, dry suits could run anywhere to a thousand, twelve hundred dollars, something like that. So, we got varying degrees of pallet protection to help you out. We like to keep it simple as possible with just the hydro skin uh, that works very well for what we're doing around here. And that level of protection enables us to paddle all the way through middle of November. If you have any questions, anything uh, related to fall paddling, uh, what to wear, where to go, how to be safe out there, please let us know. Um, we're here to help you enjoy your time on the water. Thanks a lot and happy paddling.